Introduction of Dr. Lin Zhao Breathing Qi Gong, also known as the Vagus and Spinal Nervous Stimulation. Dr. Lin published his anal breathing method for ejaculation control in his book, Resonant Excitation of Sexual Orgasm, in 1997. This method has been proved to be very effective in male ejaculation control, by detraining or blocking the ejaculation nervous reflex arcs of the prostate and seminal vesicles in lumbar discs L1 to L3 and by shifting the sexual stimulation reflex arcs to the sacral discs S1 to S5, the cheeks, and the lumbar discs L4 and L5. He has further developed a sequence of anal breathing physical exercises that perform simultaneously low abdominal expansion inhaling via the somatic motoring nerves, that is, the so-called Dantian breathing by classic Chinese Taoism Qigong practitioners with gluteal muscle contracting against the tailbone or cheeks nerves. The anal breathing exercises are to train the nervous reflexes of the thoracic cavity, the abdominal cavity, pelvic cavity, the tailbone, and the gluteal muscles, in response to stimulation, into a neuroplasticity state. Somatic, low abdominal expansion inhaling is to activate the vagus nerves, both parasympathetic sensory and motoring, in the enteric nervous system of the gastrointestinal system and in the bladder, while gluteal muscle contracting against the tailbone nerves is to stimulate spinal nerves, both parasympathetic and sympathetic sensory and motoring. Therefore, the anal breathing exercise is named as the vagus and spinal nervous stimulation qi gong, or simply, anal breathing qi gong. It is a combination of the anal breathing method and sexual qi gong. As described in this book, for the classical Taoism's microcosmic orbit qi circulation. By the way, what are qi and qi gong? The Chinese character qi means air, and gong means work or energy in physics. Qi gong, meaning air works, can't be interpreted as let air generate energy in your body. That is, Qi is beyond the common sense of air in support of life. There are two ways of breathing air to create energy, one, oxygen, naturally, and two, breathing action to excite the brain and central nervous systems, and to promote the endocrine function and the blood circulation. The latter is the principle of Qigong breathing, Kundalini Yoga breathing, and Taoism and Buddhism meditation. Accordingly, Qi is extensively referred to nervous action, instead of air, or Qi is a result of nervous and endocrine stimulation that elevates the nervous electric field or blood flow induced nervous action. Noticeably, the endocrine stimulation doesn't limit on the internal endocrine organs. Skin and muscles can do endocrine function with liver enzymes, as well. In classical Taoism's Qigong theory, Anything that promotes or stimulates nervous action, internally or externally, can be termed as qi. In meditation, mind focusing can activate somatic motor nervous action on the focused area where the somatic, autonomous or slash and vagal sensory nerves feed back the conscious and unconscious nervous action back to the brain. Therefore, movement of mind focusing along the front and the body can circulate qi. Physical exercises can promote nervous action throughout the entire body, internally or externally. Therefore, physical exercises can promote qi, too. There is good qi or bad qi. Good qi is from the parasympathetic and vagal nervous action with moderate or mild sympathetic nervous action. Bad qi, also known as nervous fire is from the hyperactive or overstimulating sympathetic nervous action which overpowers the parasympathetic and vagal nervous action. Bad chi results from the hyperactivation of the stress response axis, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. Thus, chi has become the foundation of the traditional Chinese medical concept, or TCM, for short. TCM uses the body catching fires to describe the bad chi from excessive exercises, physical or psychological stress, or inflammatory responses. 
to benefit from Qigong practices, you will have to promote your parasympathetic and vagal nervous action, instead of the sympathetic nervous action. Therefore, we have to focus on the parasympathetic and vagal nervous stimulation through Qigong practices. Now, what are the relationship among traditional Chinese medical Qi, nervous function and electromagnetic field? According to the TCM theory, Qi is the life force or energy. TCM has used it to interpret disease causes and effects since the beginning of Chinese civilization, that is, about 5,000 years ago. In the old days, Chinese ancestors didn't have electronic microscope to observe neurons, or electromagnetic instruments to measure neural conduction or to scan the brain nervous activities. Instead, they discovered there is an body energy field, termed as qi, which can be used for diagnosis and curing illness and disease. According to the classic TCM textbook, The Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine, qi can display jing, well-being in English, and radiate sheen, spirit in English, through the eyes and face and skin has a powerful infrared emission and reflection for adjacent people to sense or feel. Therefore, a Qigong energized practitioner will emit Jing, Qi and Sheen from the head, eyes and face, known as three flowers floating on the top, and his or her five organ systems, the lung system, the cardio slash heart system, the liver system, the kidney system which includes the endocrine organs, kidneys, adrenal glands, and testicles or ovaries, and the digestive system, should generate sufficient qi harmonically, like the spring source of five streams. Today, the TCM system still refuses to modernize its theory with neuroscience for one reason, that is, qi covers nervous functions, and beyond, which cannot be interpreted by the modern medical science. That is why the Western medical societies consider acupuncture, a Chinese type of nervous stimulation, as pseudoscience or pseudomedical, although nervous stimulation has been widely used in many emergency treatments, or the long-term care of chronic nervous disorders. Some clinic studies have proved the acupuncture or sham needle insertion can release or even cure chronic pain. An interested study, known as Acupuncture for Migraine Prophylaxis, by Klaus Lind and ET.al, published on October 7, 2009 in the Cochrane Library, shows that the needle insertion in both the acupuncture points and the shim points produces the same benefit of treatments. The authors concluded, collectively, the studies suggest that migraine patients benefit from acupuncture, although the correct placement of needles seems to be less relevant than is usually thought by acupuncturists. Obviously, as long as you can stimulate the nervous systems to release dopamine, endorphin, serotonin and GABA, you should get some benefits. It is no wonder that electrode acupuncture or electropulse nervous stimulation, for example, the vagus nervous stimulation or VNS, has been widely used in the alternative and mainstream medicines. The basic principle behind the treatments is nervous stimulation, despite of different medical terms. Therefore, we can conclude that acupuncture is a Chinese type of nervous stimulation, with a needle insertion which alternate, seduce or excite, the body by your electric field. Nervous stimulation can be achieved in many ways without needling insertion too, such as electrode implant for constant stimulation, pressure massage, cupping massage, skin stimulation with herbs like hot pepper, ginger or peppermint extract, infrared thermal effects, non-destructive stretching or compressing exercises such as regular exercises, or special exercises like yoga and qigong, brain and nervous nutrients, increase of androgen hormones, and our improvement of blood circulation. Accordingly, the mysterious qi can be further considered as the body's electromagnetic field energy induced by nerve systems and by the blood magnetohydrodynamic or MHD flow in the magnetic field such as the nervous transmission induced field, earth, 
than Earth's ionosphere from 85 kilometers or 53 miles to 600 kilometers or 370 miles altitude. This means Qi is far beyond the anatomy of the brain and nervous systems. It is the interaction among the brain slash nervous systems, blood circulation and internal external electromagnetic fields. For this reason, the acupuncture points are neither in the major neurons or blood vessels except the governing vessel is assumed to be along the spine which houses the spinal nerves, the extension of the central nervous system. The brain and nervous functions are the main sources of the body electric and play the dominant role in the qi theory. Qi can be alternated by body chemical and physical processes, psychologically and physiologically. The involved factors include mind, psychic power or religion, nutrients, body chemistry, air, oxygen, sunlight, meditation, breathing, thermal effects, electromagnetic fields, nervous stimulation, exercises such as mechanical stretching and compression of bones and muscles, massage, internal and skin slash tissue endocrine functions, blood circulation, drugs industrial and environmental chemicals, and viral infection. This body electric based Qi theory can interpret and solve rheumatoid arthritis which Dr. Lin suffered from 1988 to 1994. Rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory response of nerves and joints to the variation of ionosphere altitude and thickness, as a result of weather change. The patient can forecast the weather more accurate than weathermen do. Solar storms can affect the body electric field, the Qi, too, an alternate human psychology. MRI can temporarily change both the body electric field and the blood MHD induced electric field. Surgery won't cut off acupuncture meridians unless cutting off major nerves, major blood vessels or removing organs but may alternate the location of the acupuncture points and meridians. Organs transplant will alternate the organ-associated acupuncture points and meridians until the vagus and autonomic nerves to the organ are reconnected. It may take few years for a transplanted heart to start to respond to the vagal and sympathetic nervous inputs. Okay, wow, what is anal breathing? Anal breathing is to stimulate parasympathetic and vagal nervous stimulation by contracting the anal muscle toward the tailbone, without stimulating the prostate and the bulbourethral glands, and acts like using the anus to suck air into the tailbone. The anus tailbone muscle can be trained to activate the nervous reflexes of sacral nerves S1 to S5 and cochigial with help of the gluteal muscle contraction exercises under somatic nerves from lumbar discs L4 to L5, and sacral discs S1 to S5 and cochics. The nervous reflexes in the tailbone and gluteal muscles includes the sacral plexus, and the tiny cochigial plexus adjacent to the lower sacrum and cochics. Anal breathing uses both plexuses to produce nervous action, as chi, on the spinal nerves via a complete parasympathetic nervous stimulation with a minor sympathetic nervous stimulation on L4 and L5 sensory nervous input. It is a spinal nervous stimulation for good chi. The vagus nerve stimulation can be achieved by deep inhaling with the abdomen expansion, and, then, by holding a light pressure against the bladder to prevent the activation of the sympathetic nerves projecting from spinal discs L1, L2 and L3 to the prostate, bulbary thrall glands and perineum. This breathing action is also known as sinking qi to the dan tian. Dan tian is the middle point in between the pubis and the navel point, where the abdominal aorta branches into two common iliac arteries. While holding a light pressure against the bladder, performs periodical inhaling with synchronous contracting of the gluteal muscles against the tailbone nerves. This action is known as passing chi from the central front body acupuncture energy channel, named as conception vessel, to the central back body's governing vessel, that is, along the spine. From the neuroscience point of view, 
the practice simultaneously sends the vagal and spinal nervous stimulation signals toward the brainstem and hypothalamus where both the vagal and spinal sensory nerves synaptically interlink. This is why the electric vagus nerve stimulation can suppress induced spinal cord seizures and neuronal hyperactivity. Pale breathing qigong can be further extended for qi microcosmic orbiting. The practice begins with thoracic inhaling or chest inhaling with chest expansion up to 50% of the lung capacity, followed by abdominal inhaling and expansion to sink qi to the dan tian, and, then, by periodical inhaling with synchronous contracting of the gluteal muscles against the tailbone nerves to pass qi into the governing vessel, the spine. Inhale breathing qigong for microcosmic orbiting stimulate the whole body vagus nerves and the spinal nerves. Next, what is the relationship between the Chinese acupuncture meridians and the western medical vagus and spinal peripheral nervous system? To understand why we have to train the vagus and spinal nerves to reconnect the governing vessel and the conception vessels. We first have to associate the vagus and spinal nerves with the acupuncture meridians. In fact, the vagus nerves extensively form the font body acupuncture meridians with the blood circulation to internal organs, while the spinal nerves and peripheral nervous system, sensory, somatic and autonomic, parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous division, with the blood circulation to internal organs constitute the backbone of the back body acupuncture meridians. The vagus nerves and the central spinal nerves are interfaced each other at the hypothalamus and brainstem via dopaminergic D2 receptors on the vagal afferent nerves. The vagal and parasympathetic nervous yin channels power the dopaminergic yang channel without triggering stress responses from the dopamine hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis and sympathetic nervous system. The anal breathing uses vagus nervous stimulation breathing, also known as diaphragmatic breathing or baby breathing, to promote the pituitary gland to release oxytocin and endorphins via the dopaminergic D2 receptors in the pituitary gland, and, at the same time, utilizes contracting the gluteus muscles to stimulate the cochigial parasympathetic nerves S1 to S5 and co. Then, with both oxytocin and endorphins in the bloodstream, the anal breathing also turns on the sympathetic nervous beta adrenergic receptors which indeed turn stress, that is both hormones norepinephrine and epinephrine, into good energy or the so-called yang chi. In this way, the spinal nervous stimulation becomes very beneficial for health and sex, without turning on the sympathetic nervous fires with excessive stress hormones norepinephrine and epinephrine. Thus, Dr. Lin's Qigong is a dopaminergic nervous power source, that is pure yang, driven by the vagus and parasympathetic nervous stimulation. Then, how does Qigong work? Your mind psychological or physical stimulation, or cerebral control can consciously aggravate qi, that is the unconscious electric energy in the brain, the vagus nervous system, and the autonomic, parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system to function, via somatic nerves. This is the foundation of Chinese qigong breathing and Hindu kundalini breathing of fire. Both breathing methods use the diaphragmatic, abdominal, contraction and expansion to activate the vagus nerves in the second brain, the enteric nervous system, ENS, in the gastrointestinal system, so that the vagus nerves can relay the stimulation signal to the first brain's dopamine hypothalamus pituitary axis, known as vagus nervous stimulation, VNS. VNS can awake the dopamine hypothalamus pituitary axis in a short time. Traditionally, we massage around the navel, belly button, with peppermint and ginger oil to seduce the digestive panic and enteric nervous anxiety via the opioid kappa receptors. Slow Qi Gong, deep, lung inhaling with abdominal expansion and sinking qi from the throat and lungs to the gastrointestinal tracts and pelvic cavity including the bladder, prostate, bulbary thrall glands, ovaries, 
uterus and perineum, can control anxiety and panic in a short time, while rapid inhaling or the so-called breathing of fire with abdominal contraction can cause headache, anxiety and panic. Rapid inhaling with low abdominal expansion to sink chi into the pelvic cavity can very effectively control the ejaculation reflex arcs of the sympathetic nerves and discs L1 to L3. Inhale breathing qigong uses the slow qigong, deep, lung inhaling technique, moving the qi from the throat and lungs down the pelvic cavity and perineum along the conception vessel to keep the vagus nerves aggravating followed by stepwise rapid inhaling while contracting the gluteal muscles against the tail bananas, also known as butt exercises, to generate a heat or energy flow into the spinal cord, along the acupuncture governing vessel, to activate the spinal nerves. Here, the heat or energy flow is generated by the testosterone DHT conversion in the local androgen hormone receptors with the liver's cytochrome P450 enzymes. The energy flow can wake up sexual arousal. For men, the energy flow should not be generated in the pubococcygeus muscles or PC muscles, also known as perineum and prostate muscles to activate the pre-ejaculation and prostate fluid release, while for women the energy flow should be generated by both the PC muscles and anus tailbone muscles to increase sexual arousal. In this regard, men must avoid PC and prostate muscle contraction and the nervous reflex arcs and discs L1 to L3, if they want to achieve effective ejaculation control. This means, Men should train the nervous reflex arcs of the tailbone nerves S1 to S5 and CO to replace the nervous reflex arcs and discs L1 to L3 with inputs from the prostate, seminal vesicles, bulb urethral glands, and PC muscles. Holding a light pressure against the bladder to expand the PC muscles can avoid PC muscle contraction. Both the vagus and spinal nerves relay the stimulation signals to meet each other in the brainstem and hypothalamus, where they are reconnected physically. Simultaneous stimulation from both nervous system produces a high level of physiological and psychiatric wellness and rewarding with activation of the central dopaminergic, cholinergic, noradrenergic, adrenergic, vagus and autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic, and sympathetic and with the optimal nervous modulation from the serotoninergic, gabergic and endophenergic nervous function. The central dopaminergic, cholinergic, noradrenergic, adrenergic, vagus, autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic, and sympathetic can unconsciously promote various qi's, including yang qi, ying qi, wei qi which means defense qi, and nervous inflammatory fires, the bad qi while the central serotoninergic, gabergic and endophenergic nervous system can seduce yang qi and bad qi to modulate the stress response axis, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, and, then, switch yang to ying, or from the sympathetic nervous mode to the parasympathetic nervous mode in the autonomic nervous system. Seminal and prostatic fluid chemistry does affect the ejaculation control, Intention of blocking the ejaculation nervous reflex arcs and discs L1 to L3 won't be successful if the prostate, bulb urethral glands and seminal vesicles produce excessive prostaglandin E2 and histamine, in response to the norepinephrine release from the dopamine hypothalamus adrenal axis. Excessive norepinephrine with its excessively induced prostaglandin E2 and histamine in the semen or pre-ejaculation fluid usually activates the ejaculation nervous reflex arcs of the prostate, the urethra and the glands, and overheats the brain for sympathetic nervous fight response, persistent sexual arousal, and ejaculation or orgasm urgency. Seminal and prostatic fluid containing a high level of beta endorphin melatonin, serotonin and GABA can very effectively calm the sympathetic nervous fight and enhance the vagal parasympathetic nervous control, even if the dopaminergic, noradrenergic and adrenergic function are stimulated to reach to the peak. 
This is because beta adrenergic stimulation will continuously induce an elevation of beta endorphin and corticosterone to mediate prostaglandin E2 and histamine stimulation. Finally, Dr. Lin would like to demonstrate his anal breathing method in the next video clip.